Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Open Belgium. I want to quickly thank our three main sponsors, Mono Design, Microsoft and Agentschap, Binnenlands Bestuur. But now I really want to give the floor to Freya and Leen. All right, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome for our session. I'll quickly start sharing my screen. All right, now we should... Yes, now we see my screen for our presentation about Probe. Um, and Probe um, has a, a second title, uh, Policies Fit for Humans and Machines. So what we can deduce from this is that uh, Probe is about policy making and for policy making, um, we first need the policy makers, which you can see here. These are policy makers from Ghent. Uh, within the middle are a mayor and the president and vice presidents of our city council. Um, and then, uh, on the other hand, we also have the policies themselves. As you can see here from um, uh, the last city council, we have some um, policies themselves, uh, but you can see that they're quite difficult to read. Nevertheless, they are uh, important for everyone who, who is in Ghent, uh, which includes everyone who lives in Ghent, who works in Ghent, who visits Ghent. Um, and to get a more clear example or a more clear view on how uh, these policies are important for the people who are in Ghent. We've um, constructed three fictional um, examples of people who are interested in the policies um, to start this presentation. Uh, the first person is um, Sophie. So Sophie is 39 years old, works for a bank, and she also lives in Zweenaarden, which is a part of the city um, that you can see here. Um, and Sophie is a happy member of a community and she wants, she's interested in um, information about roadworks that uh, are in, planned in her neighborhoods because this influences her commute to work, uh, this influences her daily life. So she wants to know more about uh, roadworks. Then uh, she's also interested in big construction sites in Zweenede, if a new, if a company wants to construct a new building uh, or if anything will change about uh, the view of, of Zweenede, the way it feels. And then lastly, she's also, also interested in events that are organized nearby, because um, Sophie also really likes to party. I think you can all relate to that right now. Then um, our second fictional example is uh, Mo. Mo is 53 years old and works for the city council, the people you saw in the first slide. Um, and to prepare for a council meeting, um, he needs information about uh, previous policy decisions that have been made about a certain subject. Um, he would also like to have information about similar policy decisions um, and about the history of a subject uh, to be able to uh, properly prepare for the city council meeting. And then lastly, we have Alex, um, 25 years old, volunteer for a, an organization that's concerned about the environment. Um, and Alex is very interested in funding opportunities to be able to um, start projects um, that are good for the environment rules and regulations from the city of Ghent, um, and uh, policy notes and viewpoints from the policymakers. Um, this is where the aldermen, the schepenen, um, state what they want to do in, um, in the next coming years, where they want to go, what they want to achieve, which is very interesting for um, organizations. Now, if you remember from the, the first slide, the way the, the calendar is, the way it looks like, it's very difficult to get the information out of there for Sophie, Mo and Alex to get this information from the website. So this is what Probe um, wants to change. Um, yeah, so um, to tackle these uh, challenges, we've started our project PROBE. So PROBE is, uh, stands for uh, Proactieve Openbaarheid van Bestuur. So uh, proactively opening up uh, the information and local decisions. Um, this is a City of Things project. So it's uh, funded by VLAIO and um, City of Things program typically funds uh, smart city applications. So uh, that's what we're trying to build here. Yeah, for you. Next slide, yeah. Um, the main goal of PROBE is to make um, the information of local decisions um, easier to find, uh, easier to search, uh, and also easier to access. Um, and with that goal in mind, um, we will be creating a new application. And this application is um, both for um, internal staff uh, as for external users. So as an internal tool, there was the use case of uh, Mo. Uh, he wanted to prepare for his uh, council meeting. So that's a feature that uh, that Probe should support. 
Um, but at the same time, we, we are also reaching out to the, the citizens of Ghent, uh, getting them more involved into policy making and making them more familiar with, with what has been decided by our local council. So uh, Probe is, is really a project about being more transparent as a, as a local government. Um, the way we want to achieve this is by extracting um, as much structured information as possible from the decisions. And, and the structured component um, plays a very important role in our project because uh, the more structured our information is, the easier it is for machines to understand it and the easier it becomes also uh, to reuse in, in different kinds of applications. Um, at the same time, we know that lots of interesting information is actually residing into unstructured components. Um, often the entire context of a decision is, is published uh, as an attachment to that decision, so as a Word document or as a PDF. Um, and we also have, for instance, audio and video fragments of the local council. So they are a real challenge because um, yeah, they're unstructured. And with Probe, we will try to explore how we can gain insights from these uh, unstructured components as well. The two uh, main technologies that we will be using in the project are uh, linked open data and artificial intelligence. Um, this is uh, how the project was structured. Uh, it consists of, of five main pillars. Um, the first one, uh, the as-is analysis, uh, we started a year ago uh, in the middle of the, of the first lockdown. Um, the main goal there was to have a look, um, okay, how does the, the as-is architecture look like? Um, what are the current applications involved in the publication process of, of local decisions? How does the information flow? Um, what linked open data standards do we need to take into account? Um, then the next two, they're really the core of the project. Um, we have on the one hand a, uh, a user research track, um, which is a kind of major brainstorm that we've had with, with lots of potential users. Um, we've interviewed many of them in a one-to-one -one interview and we'll also be sending out a, a survey. Um, and on the, on the other hand, we have a more uh, technical work package. Um, so we'll be screening the wish list from the users and then we will try to translate this into a more technical roadmap uh, and this roadmap then will be the, the driver for our implementation process. So these two, uh, both the uh, user track um, and the, the reference architecture, they're being approached in an, in an agile manner in the project. So we've done a, a first round of interviews. Now we'll start creating uh, a UI wireframe of our application. We'll be going back to the users um, until we are satisfied with the, with the blueprint of our application. Once we've finished uh, the user research and reference architecture, there will be a proof of concept um, by November this year. And if that uh, proof of concept is successful, then we hope to implement a solution in, in 2022. Yeah, next slide. Um, okay, um, let me start by quickly guiding you through our, our current application landscape. So you can see a screenshot here of our, of our web application. Um, the URL is, is at the bottom of my slide, so ebesluitforming.gen.be. Um, this is an online website, it's open to everyone. Uh, as a citizen, you can easily consult there what has been decided in, in the different councils meetings of the city. Um, it also has a calendar view, as you can see, so you can see which meeting is taking place when. Um, when you select a particular meeting, then you can see uh, the entire agenda. And there, also, there is also a, a streaming functionality. So um, if you want to hear how our politicians are debating about certain topics in uh, their Lucius Ghent dialect, then, uh, then this is a must. Yeah, next. Um, this is more in detail um, what kind of information is made public. So on the left, you see the different types of councils. Um, some of the information uh, is already available from 2013. Uh, other content has only been published quite recently. Um, making information about decisions publicly available can be done at, at three different levels. Um, and there's a Flemish decree that determines exactly what must be made public on our local website. So either we publish only the titles or a summary of the decisions or we publish the entire content. Um, for some of the meetings, we already publish the proposals even when they are in a draft uh, status, but others only get published when they are formally approved. Um, and as you can see, we also have a quite broad coverage already of, of live streaming. Yeah. 
Um, the content that you see on our website is also published as, as linked open data. It's published in, in RDFA. Uh, that means that the contextual information and the semantics is embedded directly into the HTML. Um, and this RDFA is also harvested by the Flemish government um, because our way of publishing the information on our local website fits into a larger program, uh, LBLOD, Local Decisions as Linked Open Data. And that's a program uh, run by the Flemish government. And their aim is to build an, an ecosystem where all information from all local websites in Flanders is harvested. Um, LBLOD, the program, is built on, on standards uh, and linked open data. And the two standards that are used in the exchange of information towards uh, LBLOD, um, they are two standards of the uh, Oslo program, so the Open Standards for, for Linked Organizations program. Um, and in our case, it's the Application Profile, uh, Publicatie Besluit, and Mandaten Databank. So they really describe um, the core model in which decisions and meeting minutes and mandates uh, should be expressed. So uh, finally, we're talking about linked data. So that means that we not only express our semantics in a formal way, but we also try to link it up to other databases. In the case of uh, e-besluitvorming, where possible, we reuse the URI of the central database for mandates and also the URI of the Flemish, Flemish uh, codex. Yeah. Okay, um, publishing linked open data in the source application where the information resides, so as we do here for e-besluitvorming, uh, this is totally in line with our overall linked data strategy that we have in Ghent. Uh, one of the guiding principles there is that we try to adopt an uh, interoperability first strategy, uh, both on the semantic level, meaning you try to express the meaning of data preferably by using standard vocabularies, but also on the technical level. So we use really uh, interoperable formats. Um, and, and both um, semantic and technical interoper interoperability um, are two very important conditions if you want to integrate with different data systems. Um, so the fact that we publish already linked open data in, in the source application and not transform the data to linked open data in a process afterwards, this adds up to the fact that we really want to encourage a kind of decentralized approach of managing data. So managing the semantics should be done by the data owner. And our, our motto is to collect data only once and to reuse it wherever you can. So by making the data interoperable, you of course want to stimulate reuse of your data. You, you make sure that your data can also easily be reused. And an example of this is of course a human friendly uh, interface as we have right now. Okay, um, so this was rather theoretical. I'll, I'll try to demonstrate this with an example. Um, it's a pretty famous example for the people in the room who are from Ghent, um, where are the sheep? Uh, and no, I'm not uh, talking about the altarpiece of Van Eyck, but actually about real sheep, the kind that is uh, doing some uh, grazing on, on green meadows. Um, they play an important role in Ghent in eco-grazing, and they're, they're really famous because they have a sheep tracker, and you can follow in real time the position of a herd of sheep that is walking around the city. And the data are also available uh, as open data on our open data portal, by the way. So, but there actually has been um, some local decision-making about the sheep. So uh, if you look for sheep on our website, you will find some decisions, uh, as you can see here. Yeah. Yeah, so here you see the, the meeting minutes of the city council. It's not really clear, but you can see here who was present at the meeting, uh, when the decision was published, who voted in favor or against, uh, et cetera. Um, and you also see the, the link to the live stream. This, um, where are the sheep? They, this has to be translated to a model, and this is a, a, a more detailed view of the uh, Oslo model. Um, I will not explain it into detail, but you can see some some core concepts here uh, on the slide. So um, which council meeting it is, which items were on the agenda, who voted in favor, who voted in against, um, a description of what was decided um, and what was the motivation behind it, for example. Yes, next slide. And this is then uh, how the RDFA looks like. So you see um, how the semantics in yellow, it's indicated how the semantics is embedded into, into the HTML. So it's added at the level of attributes. Um, so you can really see how the model is published uh, on, the, on the HTML page. Okay, so this was a uh, rather quick introduction of the as is application. Uh, I think it's now time to hear what our users had to say. Yes, so uh, the three fictional uh, citizens that we've presented uh, at the first part of the presentation 
are actually based on uh, results we got from our uh, user research, which uh, is the English term I constructed for Gebruikers on Zoek. Um, so in our user research, we want to discover um, what the needs are of the people who are interested in the policy decisions. Um, so the first goal of this user research was to determine like, what do you need? Um, how can Probe make the interaction with the policy decisions easier? How can we make it more straightforward? But on the other hand, also, is there an added value that we can create um, through Probe? Then a second and a third goal of this user research was first to gain support. Um, if you have the stakeholders, if they're interested in the project um, and you have their support, it's easier to get the results you actually want. Um, and to also construct a pool um, for user tests. So once that we've been able to um, develop certain things, um, we want to do this in an agile way. So we uh, communicate back and forth with the actual users about um, the products that are developed in Probe. Um, and this is an overview um, about uh, the people we've actually interviewed. So on, on the one hand, um, there was uh, the civil servants, so the people actually work for the city's administration that we've interviewed, such as the presidents of the city council, uh, the management support service, uh, who are uh, most close with the policies, uh, participation communication departments, um, and then more thematic departments. And on the other hand, we also interviewed some external stakeholders, such as the press, who is um, also very close um, with the policy making process, members of the advisory boards, um, some citizens, um, someone who has a cafe, etc. Um, now, what have we um, learned from this? We've seen that the knowledge about the decision making process um, is actually quite, quite good, especially for civil servants. They know um, how a decision making works, where they can find stuff. Um, However, with the external stakeholders, there's a lot of variability. There are people who are more acquainted than, than most civil servants with um, how the policy making process works. And then there are people who don't even know that there's, there's um, a public website, for instance. And then we've seen that most people use um, the, the regular tools, such as the e um and also uh, the regulations that are on uh, the website of the city of Ghent, but some of them also have some custom software or other websites uh, where they find information. Then the, the main results we found, like the main conclusions up to now, because we haven't uh, quite concluded everything, is that um, a more intuitive search um, would be a great help. With a, That's a, something we've heard uh, from almost everyone we've interviewed. Then a link between related policy decisions. That's so you can, when you look for something, a certain policy decision, you can easily find something that's related, um, that's about the same subject. Um, there's also a need for uh, receiving notifications. If, um, for instance, Sophie, if something, uh, if a road work is uh, going to um, take place in the streets next to where she lives, she can get a notification about this. Um, there's also quite some interest in the spatial implications of policy decisions, where, uh, which location um, do they have an impact, and to be able to um, look for themes such as uh, mobility, environment, etc. Then, so these are the um, the things that we want to do, that we the, the results of our research, <laughs> research. But um, now, what are the technical needs for this? Yeah, so I will try to translate this to um, to some more um, technical components. Um, yeah, you can show them on the next slide, Efrea. Um, so these are the technical components that we see. Um, but I mean, this is really yeah work in progress. It's a, it's a first draft. We've only started this uh, work package in the beginning of the month. So the next coming weeks and months will be devoted to exploring this more in detail. So um, yeah, maybe for the next Open Belgian session, we will have more uh, definitive uh, schemes. But um, yeah, so this is a, a, a first draft of technical components. Um, so maybe the first one, uh, more structured data. Um, yeah, next slide. Um, so um, the first thing we'll need to look into is, is to define the scope of data that we will be using our, in our pilot. Um, probably we will be adding more structured data than the ones that we are obliged to make public on our website according to the, the Flemish decree. Um, content of meetings such as the Q&A and the committee meetings, 
they are also available on our website. We do not uh, make we, we are not obliged to make them publicly available, but we will need to evaluate how well they fit into the uh, Oslo model. So that will be probably a first thing that we'll need to look into. Um, also, we will need to determine how far back we go in history. Uh, will there be a cutoff in time? Um, but what is sure is that all of the structured data will be harvested uh, into our knowledge graph. And for this project, this will be a, a virtuoso a triple store. Yeah, next slide. Um, as I said before, so the real challenge of the project will be to include the uh, unstructured content. Uh, we have, for instance, uh, audio and video recording, as you as you saw. Um, and within that recording component, there's also functionality that allows to translate the speech, even the dialect, uh, to text. So that me this means that um, these recordings might be a very rich source to add to our uh, to our architecture. And another type of unstructured information are, are, are Word documents or, or PDFs, of course. Um, so you can see a, an example here. So here are my sheep again. Um, this is a document uh, of uh, on the sheep that are grazing in the grasslands of uh, Burgoy and Ossemeersen. Um, so if we are able to extract the term uh, Burgoy and Ossemeersen, we might link it up to a location. But we could also link it up to a theme such as ecology or eco grazing. And if all these concepts become uh, interconnected, yeah, this will allow for a much uh, richer way of, uh, of querying. Yeah, next slide. Um, so these kind of um, things, it, it, it requires that the information that is uh, presented in a text form can also be processed. Um, so we will need to define in the project patterns to really understand the semantics, the context uh, of the text for further processing. And uh, natural language processing is, is typically the area that might solve these kind of uh, challenges. So extracting terms from unstructured content, trying to determine their meaning, and according to some predefined categories, classifying information such as time, names, location. Um, that is what we will do in the named entity extraction component. But we'll also be extracting metadata, for instance, from the PDFs or the words or text from PDFs. So these are all uh, done in the knowledge extraction uh, part of the architecture. Yeah, next slide. Um, Linking to other data sources via URIs might also be an important feature in our future architecture. So in our current solution, we already use whenever possible the URI of the central database for mandates and for the Flemish codex. But um, depending on the use cases, for instance, if we have user stories uh, on extracting location concepts, um, we could easily imagine that we will also try to link up to, for instance, CROP, which is the base registry for addresses or to um, the generic platform for public domain information, which contains uh, information about road construction work. So these things are still to be defined, but it's a, it's a, it will be a very interesting feature as well. Um, then the project definitely will benefit from a, from a good search engine. Um, I think one of the feedback elements uh, in our user research was that uh, the current search on uh, EBIS forming which is an exact word uh, search was too limited. So we will be exploring as well whether we can optimize our searching algorit algorithms, uh, use for instance fuzzy search, synonym search, to help the user to find what uh, he or she is uh, looking for. And then the last two components, they have to do with uh, the interfaces that we will build, we, that we will be building on top of it. Um, it's clear that we want to make the data accessible in an open, standardized, and machine-readable manner. So um, for our knowledge graph or virtuoso, our Sparkle endpoint will be available, and we will probably also look at the JSON API to make the data available uh, for other applications. And then last but not least, uh, yeah, we'll also be implementing, of course, a user-friendly uh, UI on top of it. Um, what exactly we'll end up with that will be determined in, in the user research track. Uh, it could, for instance, be uh, a chatbot uh, with AI, where our bot is capable uh, to, to answer uh, complex queries. So, but this will uh, be defined the next coming weeks. All right, so as you've heard um, by now, already read the beginning of the project. So um, we've started defining what we want, but uh, the, the biggest part of work still needs to come. So this is a high level um, overview of the timing of the next steps that we will take. So um, in April, um, we will finish um, the user research um, and we will communicate results 
um, on the website. Then from April till June, we will um, explore um, the market together with uh, Agentschap Binnenlands Bestuur, because um, they have similar interests um, as, as us to uh, extract information from policies. And from September on, um, the actual development will start. And uh, the project is uh, meant to finish um, in October 2022. Um, so what can we do now? If you are interested in policies from the city of Ghent, you can fill out our survey. I will uh, paste the link in the chat in a minute. Um, and then for me, one of the most important things to uh, mention as well is um, that we have um, so to do this project, we need a, a team of people who are very capable with very specific expertise. Um, so I want to thank uh, the people from the team here, um, from the city side, that's um, from management support office um, and data and information, and from the Stricknell Nehen side, uh, team web and, uh, and Hans. So uh, it's an amazing team. So if there are any questions, um, you are here. I see a question from Isabel. Um, I think we can start. Looking at it, do you maybe want to, um, can we give the microphone to Isabel? Is that possible? I will also try to I can it. unlock the, the participants, yeah. I, I will turn on the, the audio. Okay, cool. Because I did not entirely get the question. Is Isabel still there? Yes, but everyone entered in listen mode only, so they have to reconnect to the to the audio. Uh, it can I take some time. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. Uh, it's typing. Thank you, Pascal. <laughs> yes. Hello, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry for this. Welcome back. Uh, you know, very interesting presentation. And I was wondering if you um maybe you did not because i saw your roadmap at the end but is there any intention to apply that to the COVID measures as you know there's also kind of policies they've been mm -hmm. quite a lot and as a citizen if you want to know which measure applies to, to you as a certain point in time it's almost impossible and so this kind of tool you are uh, you've been describing here would be extremely useful um if we could transform all those policies which are in different sides or measure, it is something you can put into a virtual assistant or a bot so that I can query a bot and say, no, I want to go to the restaurant today in that place. Can I go or not? I think it would be a very good application. I think concerning restaurants, I don't think restaurants are in the policies. Um, but I think it would, I, mean, I think it's a goal to make it possible that you know, um, for instance, with the face masks, um, that it's easier to know um, where you have to wear one or what is the policy right now. So I think. No, if you're interested, we develop a use case around that in an international organization called My Data with My Data for, Data for Pandemics where we mm -hmm. look at how we actually want to use a virtual assistant with human machine readable rules to actually support travel, go to school, go to work, whatever you may dream in the context of pandemics. And I think your tool behind would be extremely useful. So happy to have further discussions. Yes, I think that's a good idea. It's quite difficult to understand. Sometimes there's a just like um, waves in the in the sound of the microphone, but yes, I think it would be very good to to um, continue that uh, conversation somewhere because it sounds very interesting. I'm I'm not quite sure whether we can help with Prova for that, but maybe we can. Mm. Uh, yeah, it will require, for instance, that we also extract uh, concepts of location. So, for instance, uh, you need to wear a face mask mask in the uh, shopping pedestrian area. 
then we need to be able to locate really what what that is so uh, yeah it's a very interesting use case i think for our future tool and well i'll send an email uh, right away thank you <laughs> Any other questions or remarks or I'll also paste the link for the survey here. All right. Yeah, intuitive search, yeah, it's a broad term, of course. We're all thinking of a, a Google-like uh, search. Um, but things we want to explore is like, of course, synonym search, uh, fuzzy search, so that takes into account proximity of terms and things like that. So uh, these are searching algorith algorithms that we will uh, will be exploring into the, in the project. If there are no further questions, I, I would suggest to maybe stop the recording and we can leave the session open for a few more minutes if people do come up with uh, more questions that we can still answer them. But I will already stop the recording. Good.